devil himself. And the devil would tell him, oh, you know, man, I gave you everything. You're going to leave me. And, and the guy was pleased. He says, I'm never going to leave you. You know, and he says, yes, you're going to leave me. And his testimony said the devil went to grab him, but then the cross came. And the enemy, the devil, amen, withered like a little baby down on the ground. I couldn't touch him because of the cross. You know, and, and he goes on to say it again, amen, but the, the thing that got me, amen, is that, you know, in Psalms 139, verse 8, I believe it says, David said, if I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. How many know, amen, that God found us in the midst of our hell? Amen. If you're truthful, amen, you know that God found you at your time, at your lowest time, at the time that you needed salvation. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. You're already on the, world, on the road to destruction. But the cross came. Amen. The cross, I mean, the, the, we became, as one man said, we became, we were once cursed, but now are blessed because the one that was blessed had turned to a curse for our sake. And God, amen. Love the world so much that he gave. You know, we see that we see that scripture in ball games, we see it around, it's played off and everything. But sometimes we forget the true meaning of that scripture that God so loved the world. You know, we, we have all this kind of love. And let me let me uh, uh break down some of the love that found in the Bible. Eros, arrows. It is a Greek word for sensual or romantic love. The term originated in the mythical Greek god of love, sexual desire, physical attraction, physical love. Eros, whose Roman counterpart was Cupid, promiscuity in all types were rampant in ancient Greek culture, is one of the obstacles that Apostle Paul had to battle when planting churches in the eastern Mediterranean. In 1 Corinthians, Paul warns young believers against his coming to immorality. Flee you for lust, he said. Even though the term Eros is not found in the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, it vividly portrays the passion of erotic love. This kind of love, amen, this Eros love, man, is, is that physical attraction, you know. When youngsters fall in love because they, they look at each other's eyes and they think, oh, I'm so in love. Don't know how you do your laundry yet, but you're so in love. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Don't have a job yet, but you're so in love. First time that you've ever seen another uh, opposite sex face to face, amen, and you, you can swear that it's love. It's not, amen. It's the kind of love that this speaks about, amen. It's that physical attraction. Wait till you wake up with them the next morning. Uh oh. Harriet may be a Harry for all you know. <laughs> you were drunk, amen. You thought you loved, amen. It's that physical attraction. At the end, it's that physical attraction. It's that, it's that sensual attraction. And, but that's not the kind of love I want to talk to you about today. The other one is stor, uh, storge. Storge love. There's a term love in the Bible that you may not be familiar with. One man said this Greek word describes it's a family love. It's an affectionate bond that develops naturally between parents and children. This is the kind of love, amen, uh, that we have in a family with brothers and sisters and parents. Family love is found in scripture such as the mutual protection among Noah and his wife, the love of Jacob and his sons, the strong love between Martha and Mary had for their brother Lazarus. That kind of love, amen, that, that, that kind of brotherly affection, amen, is, you know, as we are a family of believers in this place, that's the kind of love that we show for one another, a family type love. You mess with one bean, you get the whole burrito. That type of thing. You know, no, nobody goes away, you know, you, you get on the phone, hey, I need prayer, you bet, you know, the prayer chain starts. Amen. That kind of love, amen, that you know what, my brother, my sister's in need of prayer, of course. Drop what you're doing, man, and pray for them right then and there. Amen. If you're driving, you pull around, say, Lord, whatever it is that they're going through, help them. Yeah. If you're working, you tend to drop what you're doing. And people ask, what are you doing? This is right now, I'm just praying. And then give me a minute. I just want to pray for my brother. I want to pray for my sister. I want to pray for my son. He called me. I want to pray for my daughter. I want to pray for my wife and my husband. That kind of love, it's a pretty strong love. Can you say Amen. It's a strong love that you care about one another, one another's being, amen. But that's not the love I want to talk to you about today. The other one is Philip, which is like the uh, in Philadelphia, amen. And Philadelphia stands for the land of friendship. 
This is the kind of love that you have, man, when you grew up with some friends, amen, or you grew up with some people around you, amen, and you, and you have that, that, that friend love, amen. The love, amen, that, 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 that uh, you know, it says here, encompassing love for fellow human care and respect and compassion for people in need. The concept of brotherly love that unites believers is unique in Christianity. Jesus said philia would be an identifier for his fires. If you love one another, you will know, they will know that you're my disciples. That kind of love, amen. But the love I want to talk to you about today, amen, is the agape love. It's the highest of the four types of love in the Bible. The term defines God's immeasurable, uncomparable love for humankind. The divine love that comes from God, agape love, is perfect, unconditional, sacrificial, and pure. Father, be glorified, Lord, let your name, name be lifted on high, God, and let your word be delivered according to your will, O Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And why is this so important? Because sometimes what happens in our lives, church, is that we can come to church and have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Because we forget, amen, uh, you know, that the love of God that was presented to us on the cross. Maybe some of us, amen, should see the passion of the Christ one more time. Yeah. Maybe we should be remembered, amen, of what was taking place, amen, at the time when he was beaten, at the time that he was crucified, where he could have came up from the, uh, from the cross. I believe it was Perry Stone who said, man, uh, the, the, the word of God says, don't you know, man, that I can call down a, 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 a 12 legion, amen, a, 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 of angels. You know how many people 12 legion of angels can, call, can destroy? Hmm? 12.4 billion. That's the entire human race. What was he saying? He said, man, look, if I didn't love these people, I would call down angels from heaven and it would destroy every single one of them. Yeah. And if he had the heart of some people, amen, uh, it would continue on in the phrase, I would destroy every single one of them and not bat an eye. See, that kind of love, amen, this kind of love is, is hard for people to accept because, man, they've never been loved. They've never been, amen, uh, uh, affectionately loved. Maybe throughout their years they've been called names, amen. They've been made ridicule, amen. Uh, man, and I know when we went to the Philippine Islands, one of the pastors said one of the hardest things that we have to overcome is getting these people to know that God loves them. Why? Because they were abandoned by their parents. Nothing was wrong. The parents were poor. They just put them in an orphanage because they didn't want to deal with them. Amen. So now their attitude is, how can you tell me that this love that I don't see loves me when my own mother and father that I do see abandoned me? Yeah. Are you with me so far? Yeah. See, the love of God, amen, understand, gets into your heart, gets in deep into your heart. Man, the love of God gets in there, amen, and roots out all those things, amen, that hurt you. Roots out, amen, the, the power of love, amen, uh, can, the, the, the power of agape love can come into your heart. Root out those root of bitterness. Why? Because you feel the loving Savior's arm around you and say, listen, I accept you for who you are. Doesn't matter what you've done, been. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter how many times you've done it with. I accept you for who you are. And if you accept my love, I can change who you are. Because how many know love can change people? Can you say amen? I remember a, a story of a young man. Uh, he went to the, uh, to the dog pound. And he went in and he sees this pit bull, man, just growling, man, just being angry. And he goes up to the, to the, to the, uh, the keeper there and he says, I want this one. You don't want that one. Look at him. He goes, no, I want this one. Give me this one. He says, if you take this one, we're not liable for what happens to you. This dog is dangerous. This dog, man, if no one would adopt the man today, he was going to be euthanized. Amen. He's going to die. This dog is not fit for anyone. He says, I want this one. So they gave him the dog. He puts a muzzle, of course, amen, takes him home. And little by little, amen, the dog, the, 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 this man shows his dog some love. Pets him. Just shows him some love. Man, it just shows him, amen, how he cares for him. He feeds him, man, he calls him. And within time, that dog became a vicious, from a vicious animal to a loving, kind animal. Now, if the animal kingdom can react that way, how, can my, how come we can't react that way to the love of God? Huh? 
How come we can't react? How come we won't change? See, understand when I put this thing together, man, I'm, man, and I, I was going through a part of my life. I said, why, Lord? Why? Why in the world do I have to go through all these trials? And I remember what one man said when he was going. He said, man, for 30 days, he was tormented by devils. 30 days. And he asked the Lord, why did you let that happen to me? And God said this, amen. As he said to me, I just want to know how much you love me. Because I showed you how much I love you. Amen. I loved you that much to die on the cross for you. How much do you love me? Will you be willing to go on the cross? Will you be willing to do these things? I'm talking about a love, church, man, uh, that when we feel it, that when we get it, that when we, man, we, when it gets down to our hearts, complexes may melt away. Can you hear me? Amen. Man, call me, you know, the, 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 these things just melt away, man. Sin melts away, amen. The desire to be addicted melts away. The desire to do wrong melts away. The desire, amen, to break the heart of the one that loves you melts away. The desire, amen, how you need to live for this world melts away. And all you want to do is please the one that loved you. Can you say amen? Being married, I know I let my wife down many a time. If she was to write a book about it, it would fill shelves. But the love that we have for one another, amen, because it says love doesn't, 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 uh, uh, uh. what? There you go. <laughs> love doesn't keep record of wrong. Has she heard me? Yes. When? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, really, I don't know. Why? Because I, kill, I don't keep it. Because if I do, when something flies off the handle, I don't want to put deep in my pocket and pull out an ace. I mean, well, remember this? What is that? That's what people in the world do. Yep. Yeah. Remember back in 1959? Now, I know you weren't born yet, but I know you had something to do with it. <laughs> no, love doesn't keep a record of wrong. Love, amen, is sure. Love is steadfast. Love is up, man. The unmovable love of Christ. That how many times, amen, the Bible says a righteous man falls down seven times, seven times he gets back up. What makes him so righteous? He gets back up. Unfortunately, sometimes, man, uh, Christians take that man as a license to sin. It's not. It's a safety net for when we fall on our face. We do everything we can, but sometimes the devil does give us a good one. Can you say amen? amen. I don't mean going back, man, and being addicted again and doing that. I'm talking about, man, you just lost all hope. You just lost everything. You just lost, man, life worth living for. You're going to work, you're a zombie. You're coming home, you're a zombie. You're coming to the church, you're a zombie. Man, you're a living dead, amen. You're just walking around this way to physically die when you're spiritually dead already. But you see, when you come into the house of God, that's what the Bible says, man, do not forsake the call of the assembly of the saints. Why? Because in church, in church, you'll get revelation. In church, you get your breakthrough with the praise. In church, you get the word of God. In church, you get the, in church, you hear testimonies and how God is good. In church, will you be pumped up? In church, amen. Peter had a revelation, amen. When Jesus asked him, who do you think I am? Or who do people say I am? He said, some say that you're, you're a liar. Some say that you're a prophet. And they said, who do you, who do you say I am? He says, you're Christ, the Messiah. And what did he tell? What did he say, man, blessed are you, Simon bar Jonas. For this is not revealed to you as man, but as the Spirit of God. And then what does he say after that? Do you know what Simon means? I found this out. You know what the name Simon means? Weak as sand. Weak as sand. Weak as sand. Sand. That was his name. But when he got the revelation, when he came to church. Oh, you don't want to hear that. When he came to church. When he stood before the Almighty, amen, uh, when we had a life-changing thing, Jesus, amen, looked to him and said, you will be no longer be weak as sand, but your name shall be Peter, amen, We stands for rock, and on this rock I will build my church. No longer will you be weak. 
Because you had that revelation of me, Peter. Because, man, you know who I am. You will be made strong because you came in tonight. Because you came in and worshiped God. Because you got a touch from God. Because God met you here. Amen. You will no longer be weak as sand, but you will be strong as a rock. Can you say amen? Amen. In Mark chapter 4, I believe the word, uh, the, the word of God says, man, uh, Jesus said, let us cross over. Let us cross over. I say it again, let us cross over. See, some things, amen, ain't going to change for you until you, where'd it go? Until you cross over. Amen. That hurt ain't going to get away from you until you cross yes, amen. over. That pain ain't going to get away from you unless you cross over. Man, those, those disappointments, amen, uh, when your people let you down, amen, when, when your work wasn't there, when, when no one else was around, amen, you know, it ain't going to go away until you cross over. you got to cross over over to the other side. Amen. You can't just stay there and be in that miry pit. You can't stay there because that's what the devil would love you to be. Not praising, not reading, not doing anything. Man, we're refusing to cross over and you want to stay, amen, on the other side. When the cross is before you and the Lord is saying, amen, cross over. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, I really want to finish this, amen. I really do, amen. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. It talks about, amen, uh, the, the disciples, amen, uh, or, or the ones in school, you know, the discipleship school. It was getting too big, amen. So they said, let's build something. Let's build bigger. Let's, let, let's build more. And I believe the word of God says, amen, that uh, as one individual was chopping down, amen, using an axe, it became loose, amen, and he lost the axe head. He lost the accent. He was no longer affected. He lost it. Can I share this with you, man? Before something is lost, it is loose. Yes. Huh? Before something is lost, it is loose. Yes. Maybe you loosened up in your reading. Maybe you loosen up in your prayer. Maybe you loosen up in a church attendance. Maybe you loosened up in fellowship. Maybe you loosened up in your standards. Maybe you loosened up, amen, in your conviction. But before something gets lost, it gets loose. Can you say amen? Ouch. So this individual, man, was chopping and chopping. He didn't notice. And here's the here's the thing about the enemy, man. He he moves so slightly. Remember, serpent, man. The definition of a serpent, amen, is movement undetected, man. And he is like a serpent, man. Before long, oh, you know what? Let me listen to this tune. Uh oh, watch out! It takes me back. Uh oh. Oh, it could be. <laughs> On a desert, lost without a place. To oh, From that, maybe it's something else. Amen. Huh? Uh oh. Maybe, maybe it's an Al Green tune. Uh oh. Huh? I'm just old school, man. Sorry, y'all, man. You know, I don't, I don't know these people nowadays. Man. All I, all I know, amen, is that man. You know, back then, man. Hey. <laughs> maybe, maybe you said to yourself, man, what's wrong with one cigarette? Uh -oh. What's wrong with one joint? After all, it is legal now. <laughs> what's wrong with one beer? What's wrong with hanging out with Sally in the alley? Uh -oh. What's wrong with ha hanging out with Brother Body and his glow the dark Bible at late at night? What's wrong with, you know, after all, I'm just witnessing, Pastor. I'm witnessing to the brother. I'm, no, you're not, sister. Yep. No, you're not. You're, I'm witnessing to the system. No, you're not, brother. Don't get it twisted. Man. You're loosening up. You're loosening up the conviction. Sometimes, man, you got to check your grip on God. Amen. Sometimes you got to check, amen, that axe, man. Sometimes you got to check that axe, that axe and say, man, where am I loosening up? Man, you know what? I haven't prayed like I I didn't read like I used to. Man, I, I haven't fasted like I used to. Amen. I haven't, man, I haven't really searched God like I used to. And maybe that axe head is loosening up a little bit. And you don't realize it. But one day you're going to take a swing at the enemy that's gone. Amen. Now you just got a big stick <laughs> with no blade. Huh? 
Before it gets lost, it gets loose. Yes, amen. I remember, I remember at elementary and junior high, my, my mom put the fear of mom in me. <laughs> Man, don't be getting no bad grades. I, I took Spanish and I failed. And here's the thing, my mom knew how to speak Spanish because she used to work at a sweatshop, right? And she learned how to speak Spanish without a class. So I was going to class, so her look to me was, how is it that you fail Spanish in school when I can learn just listening to these people? I knew better to answer that. So I had to retake the test. I had to retake the class. Amen. What do I know from that? Not much. Why? Because I don't use it. I was loose and using it. I didn't. Man, I don't, how many times? I, who? Man, who had ever thought I was going to marry a Mexican? Amen. I mean, man, who had ever thought that I was going to Mexico so many times? I wouldn't know. Man, I didn't use it. Man, I didn't need it. It was loose to me. And so I lost it. Now the only thing I know how to order is food. Maybe ask for directions. I have customers calling me up. Hablas español? No, sí, sí, pero mi español no es muy bueno. No, no, no. Pregúntale eso. No, 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 no. Don't start with me, man. I told you I didn't know how to speak that well. You know? But I lost it. Before it gets lost, it gets loose. Maybe, maybe, maybe you haven't, man, maybe you haven't used your, you know, speaking in tongues, maybe you haven't, you know, well, I sound silly, but do you know the power of it is to speak in tongues? Huh? Yeah. The devil can't stop you. Yeah. He tells you to shut up, amen. But why would the devil tell you to shut up, amen, if it didn't mean anything? Because the devil doesn't right. come just to say hello. Yeah. He comes in, amen, with an agenda. He comes in with a plan. He comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. So when he tells you to shut up and pray in tongues, maybe you ought to pray a little bit louder because yeah. it's annoying him. Yeah. He's getting man loose. Yeah. He's getting weak, amen. Yeah. And if you pray just a little bit more, you may be delivered or what you're praying for is coming right across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amen. Oh, I, look, I sound foolish. Well, you weren't worried about that when you had a six-pack in you, did you? You didn't worry about that when you were in the county, did you? You didn't worry about that when you were acting like a fool running around, right? You didn't worry about that when you were sleeping around. You didn't worry about that when you were loaded. You didn't, but now you're all of a sudden you're dignified, hollified, and classified, and now you don't want to speak in tongues because you sound foolish. Come on, somebody, amen. Before it is loose, before it is lost, it is loose. Oh, man. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, Amen. He, he, so he goes on and he tells, Amen, the prophet. He says, Alas, it wasn't even mine. It was borrowed. These things, man, that God gives us, Amen. He expects a return from you all. Yes, Amen. Huh? The life that He gave, He expects a return from you all. He expects a return from me. He expects a return, ROI, return on investment, amen. Uh, man, to invest his life into us, he expects a return. He says, man, it was borrowed. Yes, amen. It was borrowed. So the father comes and says, hey, where'd you lose it? Now, I know some people say, you know what, man, you knew exactly where you lose But you know what? <laughs> this man said, over here, in this vicinity, right here, in this vicinity. Because sometimes, amen, when we lose one, how many know others tumble? Huh? If we don't pray, we won't read. Yep. If we don't pray, we won't read, we won't fast. Ooh. If we don't pray, we won't read, we won't fast, man. We don't have joy. If we don't read, pray, fast, joy, we, we will have nothing to keep us straight. Yes. So it's in this vicinity right here. What's specific around on there, man? It's, it's right here. See, how many know when an axe handle, when a metal axe handle falls in the water, it sinks? Huh? It sinks to the low, to the bottom, to the to the bottom of the to the bottom of the deep. It sinks, amen. That means it's as low as it can go at that moment in time, amen. It reached the bottom of the body of water, amen. It reached the bottom of the ocean, amen. Hallelujah, man. That bad, huh? Notice all the way over there. Thank you. <laughs> it reached the bottom, amen. How many know when God found us, amen? We were at the bottom, huh? We were at the bottom, amen. 
And some of us as Christians, amen, some of us as Christians have sunk to the bottom. Have sunk to the bottom with, written with guilt, written with sin. We can't shake it. Written with pride. And we're at the bottom, amen. We're at the bottom of the lake. We're at the bottom of the body of water, amen. We got so many complexes, amen. The devil is speeding it all, amen. You'll never, you'll never preach, amen. You'll never, you'll never amount to anything. You'll never go anywhere. You can't even get a passport. Tell that to my sister over here, amen. The devil's alive. You'll never get anywhere, man. You don't have enough money. Tell that to some of the people that went, amen, to overseas, amen, with, with little or no buzz, amen. You don't, you, you can't, hey, God will never use you. You're too low. You're too this. You're too that. Well, remind them, amen, of some of the characters in the Bible, amen. Yes, amen. Moses was a murderer. Huh? You all say he was? Well, read your Bible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Noah was a drunkard. Yeah. He was? Read your Bible. David was an adulterer. Huh? Abraham, went, me, was a whatever you want to do. I can, I can, I don't mind my list, I'll do that. <laughs> huh? But you sag to the bottom, we sag to the bottom, amen. And there we are, amen. Uh, and you know, when you get to the bottom, uh, if you ever see a picture of something heavy landing at the bottom, it, 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 it poops out all that dust, all that dirt underneath the water, and it starts burying it. How many know, amen, uh, that's what happened to us at times, and man, man. Our failures, our confidence, everything, amen, uh, man, just covered us. Yeah. Just covered us. A few years ago, we went to a shepherd's meeting, pastor's meeting in uh, uh, Tijuana, T Tijuana, Mexico. And we were there with another couple, another pastor, amen. And, uh, you know, after the, after the meeting, we decided, you know, hey, let's go get some dinner. You know, let's go to the beach. Let's enjoy the beach for a moment before we head back. I don't want to stand in line right there right now. So we went to the beach, amen, and, you know, uh, the pastor's wife, the other pastor's wife got a massage. Now, his, her husband just gave her a wedding band, a couple of thousand dollars. What she did when she was getting a massage, because the ladies, you know, whatever, man, she took the ring. She put it on her lap. We were at the beach. And when... She was done when we got up to leave to go have dinner about a few miles away. We literally had to leave the beach, go in our cars, drive, have dinner. And in the midst of dinner, she says, oh, my gosh, where's my ring? And the husband says, man, wife, you're a buzzkill. <laughs> so we go back. Everything is closed. It's dark. My wife says, man, I got these little lights. So she had these little LED lights. And we're, we're, we took pictures. So we're like, okay, we were sitting over here. <laughs> well, more over here. You know, we took pictures because everything was closed. All the umbrellas and everything was out. We didn't know exactly where we were. But we took pictures. But that's sad, amen. People already walked there. People already kicked the sand around. But you know what we were, man, we pray, man, and we'll, we'll find the ring. And the path, you know, and we court, we, 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 we sectioned off, so you look at this section, you look at this section, you look at this section. So we were looking, looking, and, and then all of a sudden the, the pastor goes, hey, wife, is this your ring? He says, we found the ring. Yeah. And just like the person who said, hey, man, you know, who would leave the 99 sheep and go after the one, and would you not rejoice when you found the one? We rejoice. Yeah. We rejoice when we found that man. But here's the thing, church. Man, just like the axe said, fell to the ground and everything. Man, was, was over it. Amen. You know what? God will look for you. Yes. God will find you. Yes, amen. How does he do that? Amen. This is a trip to me because, you know, I, 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 I sure. <laughs> So the word of God says, amen, in 2 Kings chapter 6, amen, that the individual said, man, it was in this vicinity. And, and, and the man of God went and took a, a branch from a tree and he threw it. A tree. The branch from a tree. How many of you know, amen, the tree of Calvary came in our lives? Yes. Huh? Amen. 
But you get careful. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't feel it because it, you believe me. You know about this when you reach down to that bottom. Yes. If you're down at that bottom, I want to let you know the tree of Calvary is floating above the water. Amen. Uh, it's floating the way you missed it. It's floating where you got loose at. Uh, and now there's something there. Amen. Uh, there's something that's stirring in your soul, man. And you may be asking yourself, what is it? Uh, it's the power of God. Uh, it's the love of God. Uh, it's the forgiveness of God. Amen. It's the mercy of God. It's God, amen, reaching out to you. I know where you're at. I know what you've done, but that doesn't mean anything to me. I know what's going on in your life. I know you've done failed, but you know what? You're still my son. You're still my daughter. And guess what? I'm making you, man. I'm going to do a miracle in your life. And what was a miracle? That metal, that iron floated. Yes, amen. What the world deemed as possible is not impossible with God. When the world sees you, amen, uh, man, he sees everything, the pain and everything that you've gone through. You know what the world, God says, man, I'm able to heal that. I'm able to do miracles in your life. Yes, amen. The love of God, amen. The love of God. Again, one Psalms 139, amen. Though I make my bed in hell, though I go through all these things, through my foolishness, my stubbornness, my pride, you are there. I love what John Ramirez said, amen, when he met God face to face, man. When he heard the voice of God, he, God just totally told him, son, I'm coming soon. What are you going to do with your life? Huh? Jesus is returning. Yeah. And he wants to see a return of investment. Ooh, huh? Yeah. He wants to know, amen, will he come in? And when we say, Lord, you bless me with this talent, behold, I went and had a hundred more. Or will you be the one that said, Lord, I bear your talent. You'd be amazed at how many Christians hate. And that's a strong word, but I've encountered a lot of Christians. When we go out to the streets, how they will come against us. And what's funny is that when I ask them, then what is your remedy for the drugs being sold in your neighborhood? The alcoholism that's taking place. Do you know what's going behind these walls where the mother is drugged out, passed out, and the, and the father man is molesting the children because he's high on crack? What is your remedy? Huh? I know you ain't praying them in because I can tell by the evidence, man, I know the fruit. And the fruit's stating to me that you ain't doing nothing. You'd be surprised, amen, when the Lord calls, man, and says, what did you do with the life I gave you? I love what one, one individual said, amen. We are so worried about money and our family's going to hell. We worried about money, man, and man, man, everything around us is going crazy. The love of God, amen. He said, man, when he put the when he threw the branch in, the axe head floated. And he tells him, go get it. Go get it. My love restored you. Come get it. I didn't forsake you. Come here. The word of God says, come let us reason together. Amen. Though your sins be red as crimson, they'll be white as snow. Whatever it is, man, whatever you've done, you know, if you don't run from me and run to me, how many know any good parent knows, amen, when you confront your kid, don't lie to me because I'll hit you more. <laughs> huh? I made up stories, amen, didn't even make sense, man. My dad, who wasn't educated, looked at me like, I could have come up with something better than that. <laughs> the agape love, amen, the unconditional love that was demonstrated for you and I, amen, on the cross of Calvary, amen, uh, that unconditional love that it didn't matter. Man, how much love did he have when he was hanging on the cross uh, and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The same people, amen, that once praised him were the same people who crucified him. Yet he stood on that cross, amen, and said, Father, forgive him. A thief, amen, was right next to him and says, man, to this day, you will be with me. And to the end, he was forgiving. He was loving. To the end, amen, he was God. To the end, amen, he showed us what love can do. Said Simon, you'll be no longer called Simon, you'll be no longer weak, but you'll be called Peter. Saul, you'll be no longer called Saul, you'll be called Paul. 
you went from a religious killing individual, amen, to an evangelist that I will use for my sake. Well, what about us, amen? Do you think that the love of God cannot deliver you? You think the love of God, amen, has left you? Maybe you're in this place and you're saved. You're saved. You love God. You love God, man. But there's some things, man, you're just like me. You're just like hitting a wall. Like, boom. Like, what happened? My, my grandson, Anthony, I don't know, for some odd reason, when I give him a car, or when I get, he loves to crash into the wall. For some odd reason, he thinks, man, either this toy's going to break me or I'm going to break this toy. One of us is going to give. And I'll see him like, you know, bam. I said, hey, that's plastic. That's not metal. And he looks at me and goes, what? <laughs> and he'll do it again. Finally, he was just like, oh, you know what, man? It's yours, man. I bought it for you. Do what you want to do. But if you break the wall, grandma's going to get you. <laughs> Blame it on, grandma. So if he did break that toy, if he did break the wall, amen, what am I going to do? Get out, kid. Pack your bags. You're out of here. I don't care if you're only six. You'll be a man. You'll be a hardworking six for all I care. You know, you'll have. You'll be the only six-year-old with a job, doggone it. You'll be the only six-year-old in that can drive a car because you got to go to work. You ain't staying here. Get pack your. You ain't got nothing. All right, then don't pack your bags. Just get out. No way. Will I be disappointed? Yeah. Will I? Because I, I told him not to do it. He disobeyed me, man. Will I be angry? Yeah. But you know what? He's a kid. He's a kid. And he's my grandson. And just like the rest of my family. My sons don't have to impress me, they're my sons. My daughter don't have to, my daughters don't have to impress me, they're my daughters. My grandchildren don't have to impress me, they're my. Huh? They're my love. My wife doesn't have to impress me, man. Although she does. <laughs> She's my wife. And guess what? You are the children of God. We are the children of God. And as many times as we come before the cross and say, Father, forgive me, many times he'll forgive us. I was prophesied over, and one time I met with these pastors, high caliber pastors. These pastors have been around for years. Man, pastored churches of thousands. Started works overseas. And I remember one of them laying hands on me and saying, man, you'll come to a place where the attack's on you you will despise so much that no longer, no longer will the enemy try to fool you with a lion's stand. How is that possible? Oh, it's possible. Some of you can get so bad, weary, amen, that the enemy will come up to you and says, if you don't fight against me, I won't fight against you. Okay, that's the deal. Okay, don't go to church on Sunday. Uh-oh. Besides, man, the Rams are playing at 10 a.m. Huh? Don't don't go to church on Wednesday because you gotta go to, you gotta go to work Thursday. Yeah. Don't don't go don't go to don't go to church Friday because remember, man, it, it's your it's your it's your cousin Theo's uh, uh, party. <laughs> Stop going to the outreaches and telling people about God. Before it is lost, it is loose. Huh? And the love of God, the love of God will help you through any obstacle that the enemy or this world or yourself can put you through. What can separate us from the love of God? Not even my own stupidity can separate me from the love of God. <laughs> Not even my own pride can separate me. He'll look at me and just shake his head and say, son, I still love you. I got close with this story, though, my, my son Anthony. He was a daring individual. All right, he was really daring. I mean, daring. This guy was daring. <laughs> and I remember, I mean, this, you know, just a few, he probably won't remember, just a few things that he used to do, man. You know. And one time, you know, my wife and I were going somewhere, and my son Anthony jumps on his bike because he thought we were gone. And he goes and gets these fireworks. He told him he couldn't have it. So my wife forgot something. We come back, and he's riding his bike up the hill with a bag. 
the fireworks. He saw our car and he went, oh. <laughs> of course, we got on him, man. You know, we were driving away, man. But later on, man, I was really la I was laughing. I go, man, that boy, he's going to be a great man of God one day because he is a risk taker. And when he, uh, when the enemy had him, oh, heck no. That ain't going to happen. When the enemy came in and tried to steal my children, that ain't going to happen. Why? Because the love of this father yes. hmm? will not let that happen to any of his children. Now, with me, being a simple man, know how to give good gifts, how much more our Heavenly Father can give us. How much more? Don't forsake the love of God, man. Don't throw in the towel. Don't think that it's impossible. Don't think, man, that the enemy has the last word. The love of God will find you in your deepest moment, in your deepest pit. The love of God, man, will, cut, will find you, man, in the deepest tunnel, even if you dug it yourself. The love of God, amen, will come in, amen, and pick you right back up with that mire grave. Man, the love of God will run out to you when you're running from the pig bed. The love of God, amen, will come out to you when you're in the the grave will call out to you and say, come forth, amen, and you'll come out of that grave with your grave clothes on and say, man, take those grave clothes on. Man, he is alive. He is well. He is my son. He is my daughter. Don't give up on your loved ones. Don't give up on your sons. Don't give up on your daughters. Don't give up on your wife. Don't give up on your husband. Don't give up on your mother. Don't give up on your father. Don't give up on any of those people that you're still praying for. Amen. Pray with a purpose. Amen. Pray with a target. Amen. Pray. Amen. Hallelujah. That God will deliver them. Call them up by name. Call out what they're doing wrong. And say, man, devil, you have come against you. You drug addiction. In the name of Jesus, you let go of my daughter. And in the name of Jesus, you promote us you let go my son in the name of Jesus man and you pinpoint and you go after him and go after him and go after him why? because the love of the father is in you yes amen seek out seek out hallelujah God loves every single one of us in this place pastor I don't feel it I don't feel oxygen but I know it's there that just so live by faith. You say amen? amen? Maybe you are at the bottom of the ocean. Right now, I throw the stick of Calvary through you. And in the name of Jesus, come out of there. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over you right now. In the name of Jesus, you come out of that deep in the name of Jesus, you come out of that mighty clay. In the name of Jesus, you loosen them, devil. In the name of Jesus, you loosen their minds. You loosen their hearts. In the name of Jesus, you will have no power. In the name of Jesus, we claim the victory on Calvary. We will see a miracle, amen, that iron dust blow, amen, and that the axe head can be placed back into the axe handle and swing again and chop down the trees, chop down those things, amen, that are getting in our way, uh, that we will move forward, and what the enemy meant for evil, God will use for good, amen. What the enemy meant as a tree to stand in my way, I will cut down, I will build an ark, I will build a home, I will build a castle, and you cannot stop me, you cannot, man, slow me down, why? Because the love of God is upon me, the love of God covers all the of sin. The love of God gives me hope. The love of God gives me, a, oh, hallelujah, gives me the strength to go on. It's the love of Jesus. Oh, yes. Let's bow our heads for a moment, amen. You're in this place.